So start list for the women's four, the bronze medalists from the World Championships, the Russians in lane one, Germany lane two, Australia the world champions in lane three, strong British four. In the fourth lane, uh, an interesting crew from China in lane five, and then the continued renaissance of Italian sweet rowing, one of their crews in lane six. This boat has moved into the Olympics, of course, replaced the lightweight men's four, and um, that is why we can see it here, so well represented. The Russians in lane one, Potapova, Tikhanova, Zivostvanova and Ori Banskaya in the stroke seat. There are the four Germans, Sophie Oschke, furthest away from you, Falka Haka, Ida Kruse and Alexandra Hofgen in the stroke seat. Just 24 years of age, Hofgen. Okay, so these guys were fastest in the time trial. Just turning back round is Molly Goodman, the South Australian, just to check. I guess she's steering, Greg, with the You can see attached. the wires, yeah, they're attached to her foot. Behind her, coach. Sarah Hall, Rosemary Popper and uh, Lucy Stefan. There's the British top boat. We're panning down from Rebecca Short and Karen Bennett, Olympic silver medalist, Holly Norton and Fee Gammon there in the bow seat. OK, so the crew from the People's Republic of China, closest to you, you've got uh, Wang Fei in the stroke seat, Li, Yi Li Quinn, 24 years of age, Zhang Min, 25, and Guo Lin Lin, the 25-year-old, in the bows. Two of those women from the four in Sarasota that finished six in the final. And on this outside lane, we've got uh, the Italians, Stefana Gobbi, She's on the right of your picture, up in the bows, Benedetta Favrelli, Aisha Rocek, and then Giorgia Palacci in the stroke seat. Palacci, would you believe, just 20 years of age. See the focus there in this Australian crew. Interesting seeing Molly Goodman there. Seems quite concerned about getting the boat dead straight down the middle of the lane. Germany. Coxless fours do twitch around a little bit when they go off the start. So um, there's a job to do to make sure it stays Great. straight. China one. Yes, yeah, well, control the controllables, isn't it? I mean, you know, she might feel a weight on her shoulders. Attention. So the British and Australians qualified by racing on Friday. We had time trial heats and uh, they went straight through. The uh, crews on the outside, the Russians, Germans, Chinese and Italians all got through to this final by competing in the rep charge yesterday. So the Australians are relatively more fresh, I guess. That's right, the Australians and British should be relatively more fresh, um, having been able to watch the uh, racing yesterday and uh, see some, some really classy quality racing. I'm very impressed with some surprises, like the uh, Chinese crew, who did well yesterday. It'll be interesting to see now how they perform in this final as uh, we have a look now at the British crew looking down the boat. Rebecca Shorten in the stroke seat, focused right down in front, out in front of her, just pressing the puddles away down the middle of the lane. Much of it, Kerry Gowler, that look. She's fairly passive throughout the race, you know, behind those sunglasses. Totally agree with you, yeah, yeah, just holding her head nice and steady and um, just making sure the work is just being applied to the boat. And uh, as we see her there in the stern, she's coupled up with Karen Bennett, who sits behind her, silver medalist from the Rio Olympics, one of the most experienced in the British team. And uh, alongside them, this Australian crew, world champions, experienced at winning this event last year. And if you're worried that the Australians don't seem too competitive in the first quarter, don't be, because when they won the world title last year, they came through 500 in last place. Well, they're not in last now, they're in second, but they do have a fantastic second half of the race. But this is a brilliant start from the British crew. They are flying. You can see Karen Bennett there with her hair up on top of her head in a little bun, the Olympic silver medalist. She rode in the seventh seat of the women's eight that uh, took that medal behind the Americans in Rio, and they are looking great. James Harris has done a fantastic job with these four women. Well, they're really grafting now in this second 500, pressing those puddles away, making sure they dig deep, but the Australians are going with them. The British haven't been able to, to move away from them. 
mean, I think the British coaches have looked at their team and thought, this is the crew that looks best on paper, but will it actually deliver now that we're in the race and we see this uh, consistent, steady Australian crew? They've been able to have consistency from being world champions last year, and now they're going straight for stroke, and I think the British will be nervous. The, the indication of how much the British have moved on in three weeks since Belgrade, they came fourth, the Russians took third. Now, the Russians are over there on lane one. You can see the distance. There's a big, clear water distance between the British crew leading there in lane four and the Russians over on the far side to their left. There she is. She's just impassive down the boat. Rebecca Shorten, 24 years of age from Sport Imperial. It's uh, Imperial College University and the four women, three women behind are from Leander Club. As they come up to the 1,000 metres, this is where the Australians will hope to start doing damage. I think uh, China in third place, if they get a medal, that will keep their performance director, Sir Steve Redgrave, extremely pleased. They've had a good second 500, the Chinese. They certainly have, and we're going to get those time, split times, and there's the Australians who were quicker in that second 500, the Chinese pretty much matching the British, and now we've got to see what happens in the third 500. The British have got to work very hard if the Australians aren't going to come through them now. I'm sure this will be part of the Australian plan to just start to move now a centimetre every stroke. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, this crew, coached by John Keogh, who was working in Canada, now gone back to Australia, Lucy Stephan on the right of your picture in the Australian boat from Melbourne University Boat Club and then the tall figure of Rosemary Popper, she's new into the boat from uh, Banks Rowing Club in Victoria, the 26 year old. Sarah Hoare from uh, Huon Rowing Club and Molly Goodman as we've said in the stroke seat. And you can see the stroke rates there that the Australians have made a move in this third 500. They've used, they're using the rate and uh, they've started to move on the British for very, very powerful rowing. I mean, the British are much more sweepy and aggressive. You can see what it's costing Molly Goodman there. Sarah Hall behind her, the 30-year-old, the most experienced popper. And then there's the face of Lucy Stephan in the bows. We hope Molly Goodman's keeping that boat straight down the middle of the course. She had those concerns of steering in the start. But Popper brought in in the two-seat, really shoving the power down. Look at that as she goes through. They've probably taken, what, a second out of the British, second and a half maybe, and that's... Uh... Well, we'll find out as they come through 500 here when we see that split time, but definitely the Australians have moved very quickly in that third 500. The Chinese crew looks like it's coming back on the British, as does that German crew not to be counted out as well as it comes into the medal race. Well, I think that's uh, a decent third 500 for the Germans. We're riding with the British in second place at the moment. Just behind the Australians, Rebecca Shorten in the stroke seat, Karen Bennett behind her. That's, uh, you'd think it's a race winning margin if you look to the race profile for the World Championships last year. You never know, but uh, the Germans on the top of your picture, Oshka Hacker, Kuza and Hofgen, have done so well to hold off the Chinese charge. Well, it's a you young can see. German crew. They've, they're up for it, they're enthusiastic and they're going for it now. They know they're pretty much stroke for stroke with this Chinese crew and they will start to sense that they're getting towards the last 250. They're going to hit those red boys and they know it's then sprint time and I think anything could still happen here for this silver and bronze medal. So what have the British got left in the tank? It was such a beautiful first thousand metres from the James Harris coach crew but uh, the Australians are taking it away. You can see them from our drone shot. China on the left of the British, Germany on the right of the Australians. They are the four crews for three medals. There are the British starting to hurt, still in silver medal position, just that eight or nine metres in front of their opposition. Look like, looks like China coming back with a charge, Greg, through the Germans. Great finish from them. The Germans and the Chinese both sprinting really hard. The British are hanging on as well as they can. I'm pretty sure the Australians have got it in first, but we're going to need the side on pitch, and we could be in for the photos here. Germany take the gold, Britain silver, China head the bronze from the Germans. They came back with a fantastic sprint in the last 250, the Chinese crew. And uh, Russia took the bronze medal three weeks ago, come in, I think, in fourth place. Italy back in sixth. Sorry, that's China in fifth, Italy back in sixth. Well judged race, and it cost, didn't it? Look at the effort on Molly Goodman's face. It was a well-judged race from the Australians. I think the British went for it. They took it on. I think they can feel pleased with the uh, with the, the progress they're making in the event. And um, 
to get a silver medal is a good achievement and to go up there toe to toe with the Australians. Yeah. But I guess just the Australia just had that edge in the uh, second half when it really matters. Power as well. <laughs> there are the Australians off the start. Sarah Hall just coming into shot. Victorian behind Molly Goodman. There's the blades, I think, of the British. Right with metal wing riggers in that arm pack. I normally you see carbon wing riggers, but the British, well, the Aussies have got carbon and the British are using metal for their riggers. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? I actually always found a carbon fibre rigger really stiff and um, made the boat a little bit, feel a bit more twitchy. The aluminium rigger's just a little bit more forgiving. Although the carbon rigger is the way things are going, it's a little bit lighter weight and people like that stiff, direct feel. Australia across the line, take the goal. We did just see that fantastic finish between the Chinese and Germans and confirmation that China did in the end by 0.6 of a second take that bronze medal from Germany. Australia and Britain take gold and silver. Russia have to settle for fifth. The world bronze medalist just lets you know the quality of the field.